listening to the Why Are You Interview Podcast, Episode 20. Hi, kitty cats. I am Amethyst Teherik, your hostess for Why Are You, an interview podcast about identity. In the last episode, we heard about life through a gender transition and a humorous story of piracy. In this episode, we meet Ari, a writer and editor whose adeptness at telling the truth fuels the stories she tells and the healing it brings both to her and to others. This content is brought to you by subscribers of the Purple Pop Publications website, Gender Identity Today. If you are already a subscriber to Gender Identity Today, thank you so much. If you would like to support shows like this one, as well as my writing and many other authors' writing, please consider subscribing using the links you're going to find in the show notes. I hope you enjoy this discussion with Ari. Okay, and joining me today on the program, I have Ari with me. Ari, first of all, thank you so much uh, for agreeing to come and talk to me. That's very fun. Yes, thank you for inviting me. I'm pretty excited for my first podcast. <laughs> right? Yeah. See, like big interviews. It's a shame you didn't get interviewed by like Barbara Walters. You had to be interviewed by me. That'd be too much for me. I'd like to start small. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, at least you at least you recognize I'm not Barbara Walters. I appreciate that. <laughs> okay. All right, so just like everybody, <laughs> sorry, what? I'm still nervous, so. Okay. Okay, <laughs> then I'll put you at ease because okay. I met you, so I met you through, through Medium. And I don't know if I ever told you this, actually. I reached out to you because I was thinking it would be cool to write a book. And I saw that you're like, you know, important editor person. And so I went, oh, I'm. I'm going to reach out to her. And for some reason you responded, which thank you, because, you know, <laughs> I like to think we're kind of friends. We are. And thanks. I appreciate that. I'm so glad. Like it, I mean, I would have just edited it out. But if you had gone, no, <laughs> just edited it out. Um, <laughs> where was I going? Right. So I know you from Medium. You are a writer and an editor, which is why, you know, I wanted to reach out to you because I hoped you would you would give me a lift, if you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And uh, so so I wanted to start, you know, we don't have to talk a ton about your 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 career. The question that I have, like for me, writing professionally has been very different from anything that, that I've done. So. My first question is just how does how has your writing really contributed to your professional development? What role has your writing uh, contributed to your professional development? Mm, good question. I it's just sort of given me the vessel. Um, I've I've been told by a lot of teachers and family members that I'm good at writing and that I'm good at communicating my thoughts that way, and um, I've always only written fiction, mostly fantasy and, you know, speculative fiction stories. But when I decided I wanted to do something more, something more career driven, I just knew that trying to use that voice I've been told I have was going to be the way to get there. Um, and it was kind of like we were saying before we recorded how you got to be authentic. It's kind of the only way to, to right. like pull right. people to you is to feel real. So, mm -hmm. so that was just my goal to try to make something of it, but also be my actual self at the same time. Sure. Sure. Yeah. What, um, you, you said you, you had a voice there's a, that you wanted to use your voice. What, what is special about your voice or what is special to you about your voice? Cause I got my idea, but yeah, I've had to think a lot about that, even af most more after I started, I think, writing, like, nonfiction and blog mm. posts and stuff. Um, I think that I have a knack, and this is why I wanted to be in a developmental editor as well, because I think I have a knack of speaking truth without being harsh or mean. 
Um, and that's a sure. really hard thing to balance. So that's that's where I feel like I'm coming from. Very. Yeah. yeah. You, you would probably make a great manager if you can do that. I, yeah, you know, I mod some Discord. <laughs> it's enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm not trying to get, like, a new career for you. I'm just... <laughs> that's a... It, it's a valuable skill no matter what. Yes, so I've thought about that. <laughs> all right. So, so I've asked about your professional development, but how, how, what role would you say writing has played in your personal development? Mm. It's a loaded question, kind of. It's so tied into mm, everything kind of. for me. Because um, I also journal... And I do a little poetry here and there um, when the urge strikes me. And I think writing in a lot of ways is, it's just how I make friends and I connect with people. I don't have a ton of real life connections necessarily. It's kind of something I'm working on is getting more warm bodies in my life, as I like to say. Um, <laughs> but sure. Yeah, like personally, it's just that writing is how I connect with people. I find other writers, I find similarities and differences, and it's kind of, it's just very much makes up my identity. You know, everyone that I do have in my real life knows me as the writer. You know, I'll see a relative I haven't seen in a few years, and it's always, how's your book going? You know, so it's oh, just, neat. it's just completely woven into the fabric of my life. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, oftentimes I've gone to people that I haven't seen in a while, and they go, "What the hell happened to you? Why did you you look kind of different now?" That's that's what I'm getting these days. So I think change I don't is ultimately know what you're talking about. <laughs> it is. It really is. So so you see writing as I mean really uh, as your personal development. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even it's interesting. So, I, yeah, you go ahead. Please, no, you, please, go ahead. I mean, even, you know, on a very personal note, it's like, even, you know, I'm in therapy, I do whatever I can for my mental health these days, given the world that we're all living in, and um, it just helps me process everything. You know, it's, whether it's fiction, poetry, or just journaling about real life, it just is the way that I process. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the journal is just an invaluable <clears throat> an invaluable tool for you know it's not even just getting down your thoughts P processing i think is a great way to put that mm -hmm. you know you you don't it's kind of the way that i think i'm not sure how to put that if if i want to if i want to know what i really think about something i'll write it down in my journal Yes. Do, and do, have you done this? Because there have been times I'll write something down and I'll surprise myself. I'll go, God, I didn't think I thought that. Yeah. There's something have, about... Have you done that? You... Yeah, it's it's definitely, like, it, it's helped me make connections, you know, something that wasn't clicking in my head. And I'm a very mm -hmm. inner monologue person. Like, it's just always going, you know? Yes. Um, yeah. So... You know, they say when you write something down, you remember it better. And so I think right. there's some tie to that with figuring stuff out also. So you write it down and it becomes tangible. I, I like to say that, you know, it's a tangible yeah. way you can actually look at your thoughts on paper and it makes a big difference. And I know it's like, yeah. it's such a typical thing. Everyone's, oh, have you tried journaling? You know, like you hear that all the time. And it just feels so hokey, but then you sit down and do it, and it doesn't feel hokey. It's it really is helpful. Right, right. Um, what the hell was I going to ask you? I had a follow-on <laughs> question. Oh, and and you, so you were talking in particular like longhand. Mm -hmm. I mean, have you ever journaled? You ever journaled like you know typing it out? Yeah, I have. Um, sometimes I, I I feel a strong preference, you know, depending on what's going on in my life. Like, um, Oh, wow. Okay. Sometimes if the thoughts are running so fast, I will want to type. Um, but I am, I am a longhand enthusiast. I am very passionate about handwriting, <laughs> which we could get into later. 
good for, good for you. Wait, wait, really? Wait, why? No, I'm curious. Did, well, did you, do you have like the, like the Getty Dubay books or? Uh... It's just that years ago I was kind of writing blocked. Um, and someone said to me, well, have you tried handwriting? And I was like, no, I've just been typing and typing and typing on my computer. And, oh. and then I just never went back and I like all my fiction stuff. I don't necessarily do this for blog posts or newsletters, but I, for my fiction stories, I right. pretty much exclusively write them longhand before I type them up. And it's like, oh, aside cool. from the value of getting off a screen for a while, um, it's just that then when you go right. to type it up, it's like a hack because you've got a built-in edit, you know? You don't have yes. to be right. backspacing and rearranging. You just type it up. And uh, I actually mm -hmm. I number my pages either before, I mean, before or after I write. And then I actually take pictures of all the pages, every single one. Oh, and I have that picture just open on my computer, and then I type it up in the document. So... I see. I see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Th that's easier than what I do because I got to sit there and kind of go, hold on, let me see what's that say. Yeah. Is that a P? I don't know. So. Yeah. I couldn't take that looking back and forth. So I was like, wait, I just, I mean, it's a lot of work, you know, to, to upload all the pictures, but it's worth <laughs> it's a, it. <laughs> and I keep on th saying to myself, like, I've got a scanner, right? There's software that I could probably scan it in and it would do the, whatever it is, the character recognition, but. I don't know, but it's a, it's like a built-in edit. Yes. You know. I write in cursive, so no camera recognition mm. for me. I tried the, oh. the text, you know, you like scan the text with your phone and it uploads it. And I tried that once and yeah. in cursive, it yes. was, it was interesting. It was like wingdings. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. It was bad. Yeah. Many years of writing in a lab book. I, every I've you know everything is a capital letter for me so yeah cap capital like print letter whatever whatever is what's the opposite of cursive just print yeah I guess so how's it called yeah just print I don't know but it, it looks like a kindergartner you know I mean, except for when he was in a lab book you know it was most kindergartners weren't writing you know chemistry notes most not all. So anyway, handwriting, I, I stand very firmly with you on that. I think it's absolutely the way to, to get. So you know what, you made a point, you said, if your thoughts are coming quickly, you will, you're okay with typing them. Mm -hmm. I find just the opposite. That if my yeah. thoughts are coming really quickly, I, I must force myself to slow down. And that's what's so good about using a pen and paper is that now I don't have to I don't know. I don't like because because I also will edit myself. I'll type something up and I'll be like, no, nah, I don't like the way that sounds. Whereas if I do it with a pen, you're done, <laughs> right? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And actually, there. Yeah. It's the know thyself thing, you know. Because the. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I, it's much easier for me to censor myself if I'm typing. Yeah. Much easier, because because mm -hmm. there have been times I've been writing something and I've gone. I probably didn't want to write it like that. I really didn't. Well, I don't want to have to like cross out a, pa a paragraph. No, nah, I just move forward. Nobody's going to read it. And then like two years later, I'll read it. and I'll be like, oh, that was spot on. Huh. So I would have thought. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Well, I could probably talk about, I could probably talk about pens with you all day. Because yes. I love pens and paper and the feel of a fountain pen on paper and but I, I have other questions. Yes. And and I knew, by the way, that that fiction, that fiction, especially fantasy, is your thing. So mm -hmm. so I have some questions around it. All right. Um, so I I'd, I'd like you to put yourself into like a fiction book, like if if uh, you know, well, let's play fantasy for a moment. Not not that way. Sorry. <laughs> but, If I move on quickly, nobody will have heard it. Okay. If you could be a character in a book, any book, I don't care what, a, what I mean, it should probably be fiction because, you know, 
Andrew or Dale Carnegie, like not really good character development in that. So, <laughs> but if you could be a character in a book, mm. who would it be? Oh my gosh, that's really, I've never thought about that for all of my fiction reading. Um, this is going to sound a little weird, um, but I don't know if you or listeners will be familiar with the Clan of the Cave Bear series by Jane G- yes. it's Jane, or Jane Awell. A lot of people have read it, but um, I would love to just be a side character in one of those books. I, I'm not exactly an outdoors person. But I'm also not Mm -hmm. exactly an indoors person. And there's just something about the environment in those books is I just want to be there. I want to be, I want to live in that world. So that's just the one that, that's the answer that comes without me thinking too hard about it, which probably makes it the Mm -hmm. the true one. (laughs) Yeah, you don't want to overthink that one. Um, But but you said a a side character. Why, Why not a main character? Um... The main character, Ayla, is, uh, she, like, has a husband and has kids and, like, it's, you know, and has kids and stuff, and I don't really want to do that part. I just want to be in the world. (laughs) Okay. Maybe one of the, one of the, there's the Selendonis, which are, like, the the healers. Uh, Maybe one of those. That would be cool. Yes. One of the healers? Absolutely. I I remember there was a movie, right, with Daryl Hannah, I think. I've never seen it. I've heard Maybe terrible early 90s? things. <laughs> they, they did make oh, me yeah, I've heard no. things about it. Yeah. Uh, Very panned. Because Pe- people were saying, because Daryl Hannah's first film, film, as far as I know, I'm no film, whatever. But she did um, Splash, the mermaid film. Oh. I don't know if you remember that one. Barely. This is how old <laughs> I am. Sorry. But so she was in Splash. She played a mermaid. And I want to say, you know, maybe she did another film and then she did Clan of the Cave Bear. And I remember somebody saying, yeah, she really should have done another splash. So, <laughs> like, that should tell you, was was a mermaid movie, you know, how do you, I don't know, splash yeah, two or something. But, yeah. <laughs> but a healer, a healer, that's awesome. So... Now I got to ask, because I can see stuff on your wall, which I don't know how this is going to end up coming out in the end, the final edit. Is there, do you have, is there like a spiritual like side to you? Like a yeah. healing energy? I, I guess. Um, I feel like it's not really a title one can claim for themselves necessarily. Um, but I well, so you mentioned tarot also before, um, earlier and I right. am, quite big into tarot i i like all i actually worked in a crystal store for like three and a half years so i okay i ended up very deep in the like kind of crystal healing spiritual world and that that could be an interview for another day because there's a whole story there but um i just yeah i i definitely have that side to me and it, it plays into my writing i would say in a lot of different ways especially just the way that I try to understand people and try to meet people on Mm -hmm. the level they're at instead of trying to bring them somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, now I've got to ask these questions. You forced me into it. First of all, this is a pendulum that you're wearing, isn't it? It's a, it's a pendant. Yeah. Um, this is Indigo Gabbro. It's called. Oh, I don't know that rock, that stone. I I was thinking like a pendulum for, What's the one of those. Okay, so see, I knew you would. <laughs> I only use this when I absolutely cannot find something. If I've lost an item, okay. I just sure. That's the only time. I just otherwise it just sits there beautifully. <laughs> right, like they should. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> All right, so so that was question one. The other one you're forcing me to ask this because I got to know. What's your favorite deck? What's your favorite tarot deck? Mm. I was thinking about this the other day. I think, so my mom bought me my first deck, and it was the Welcome to Night Vale tarot, which I don't know if you've heard of the Night Vale podcast. It mm-hmm. has its positives and negatives for sure, but I 
kind of grew up listening to it and I really loved it. And those cards, they were my first ones and it's definitely one of my baseline decks. I, I love it a lot. Um, so yeah. Okay. It's a special one to me. <laughs> because of the, the, um, because of the memories associated with it or is the, is there imagery that, that really clicks with you? Yeah, um, a lot of memories, because it's also the deck, you know, I first started doing readings for other people with, and it's like... Sure. The, oh, gosh, okay. Yeah, the symbols on those cards, the imagery, the illustrations, they just, I get a lot from them. Um, so, and there's also the Pagan Tarot. Um, you know what? I might have gotten this backwards. I think my mom actually got me the Pagan Tarot. And then, oh, okay. uh, I don't, now I don't remember if I got the Night Veil for myself. I have very bad, like, memory. Um, but those, yeah, the Pagan Tarot and the Welcome to Night Veil Tarot would be my, like, baseline favorite decks. We're up there. Okay. Yeah. 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 Reading, reading for other people, all of a sudden a deck that you're very familiar with, you read for somebody else and you go, shit, I don't. Because you're you're put you may telling somebody else's story, right? Yeah. And the the first deck I ever got, because you know you always I, for some reason I wanted to go the very worst. Apparently, I had the <laughs> Alistair Crowley Thoth Ooh. deck. Do you remember that one? I don't know if I've seen yeah. it, but I, I know about Mr. Crowley. <laughs> oh, it's it's creepy. Yeah, there's creepy stuff, yeah. and I really didn't want to read for myself, but I read for other people. Uh -huh. And, yeah, that's not the deck to, to <laughs> read for other people. Yeah. It's my thought. So, yeah, I have... <sighs> all right, well... Yeah, we... <laughs> what's that? Can't spend too long on that, I guess, because <laughs> I could go on forever about that no, also. I don't actually... <laughs> oh, yeah. no, well, let me hear it. I want to hear it, because these are great oh. stories, so... I know. Well, I, it's funny, because I actually prefer reading for other people a little bit more than myself. Um, and really? I have a couple okay. decks and I can't think of the deck right now, but I know I have one deck that I had to stop reading for other people with that one because it was scaring mm -hmm. them. It, like they felt threatened and like freaked out. And um, so that's sure. totally a thing. And for me reading for myself sometimes feels a little redundant. It's like, I will pull a card and I'm like, I need some nuance here. You know, I have a very, <laughs> right. like I have a funny relationship with all my decks that is a very different. Um, I, I have one of those little mini, mini rider weight decks. The cards are only like this oh. big and I like, will get right. in arguments with that deck. I'm like, you little thing, you know, like it. Sure. So it's, it's interesting. Yeah. But I really, I like reading for other people a lot. I, at one point in my life, I thought I might make a business of it, but then I was like, I don't really want to, Oh, wow. It didn't feel great making money off it, so I just have been getting back into it and just doing casual pulls for people and myself. Sure, sure. Yeah. In interesting, because I think that plays it plays into the the healer role that that you were talking about. It's kind of hard to to like charge somebody for like spiritual cleansing. Yeah, I don't know how to put that, but yeah, it's a good point. All right. Well, let me ask. Let me go. Let me move on before I before I think about that one too much. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so the the question I wrote down, and I guess I'm going to have to change a little bit because because the idea, the question was what situation. Um, so oh gosh, no, I wrote that down. Wow, this is a way better question than I thought. <laughs> Maybe I should have read my own questions before. Don't you love that? I wrote them like <laughs> ten minutes before too. Yeah, you'd think I'd remember, but it was like thirty minutes. But so so if you were if you were one of the healers in the Clan of the Cave Bear series, what um, what difficult situation that you face now, um, what do you think you could handle more more smoothly as that character? Like take that character now out of the book into into your real life. Um, I think for a moment on that one. So really, you are very good at questions. And, and I'm asking you, like, for difficult situations in your own life. Maybe that was kind of a crap question. Maybe. No, I don't mind. I, what if you I, end up I, coming up with. Okay. 
I wear my heart on my sleeve. I'm not a terribly private person. Um, so I'm <laughs> okay. Good. trying to find a good balance with that. But I think, you know, if I say, if I was that character, if I was a Zelandoni from that book and yeah. I was dealing with right now, I think it would be that it would be working on that warm body connection a little better. Um, Sometimes I feel so insecure when I'm face to face with people. Um, mm. Whereas if I was that character, I think I could be a little more secure in myself and the way I'm presenting myself and, and just having a, I'd love to have that sort of level of calm that the healers in those books seem to have. And just that sort of, inner togetherness because I can be very scattered. Um, so yeah, I think that's, that's my answer to that. It's, it's funny talking to you. Like you seem very calming and soothing. It's funny that you think, Oh, you know, in, in person it doesn't work, but I don't know. I mean, I haven't sat with you in person. So I think when I'm on the subject of writing, I'm a lot clearer. You know, my, my thoughts are okay. on one train, but when it comes to the, you know, the real, the, the real world, it's a tough place and I'm, I'm sensitive <laughs> to a lot of it, but when I'm online or I'm talking to people about writing, I'm in my zone. So people say they mm -hmm. like my vibe. Mm -hmm. I don't know I, if they do, then that's wonderful. But I sometimes am, am like, really? Okay. Wow. I, I wouldn't have expected that, but. I just try to take the compliments, sure. you know? Oh, yeah. No, you yeah. kind of need to, but, yeah, I mean, there's a, uh, yeah. You, you know, though, the anonymity of the Internet, I mean, you, you're you thinking it's calming. It's interesting. Most of what I see from the anonymity of the Internet is it riles people up, and then they feel confident enough to to lash out. Yeah, I think... Take it down a notch. I don't know if part of it is just that I, I mean, I'm 31 now and I've been playing on the computer, as I like to call it, since I was 12. I started going in AOL chat rooms sure. and started talking to people, you know, when I was 12. My, I mean, right. we had, my parents had just gotten their first computer. They didn't know what I was doing. I didn't really do anything bad. I was just like, mostly yelling about emo bands back in the day, but... <laughs> I think that I've spent so much time making friends on the internet. It's just like, it's just where I'm comfortable. And I don't, I personally, right. I don't get anything out of sending anonymous hate. It just. Oh, sure. Just, yeah. Like, I think a lot of people do. And, and I understand why they do. I think, just get a little deep here, but people are in a lot of pain for a lot of different mm. reasons. And when you don't have an outlet, for that pain, such as journaling or something, you go to the internet oh, and you spew. And, um, you know, I've, I've sure, avoided certain sure. spaces on the internet to avoid that. Um, so yeah. That's a great, that's a great point. Mm -hmm. That's a really good point. Yeah. If they, if you're hurting and you don't have a normal way to get it out, yeah, just throw it at somebody else blame yeah. somebody else huh. I'm very I'm very That's fortunate good. you know to have a therapist I don't take it for granted because it wasn't necessarily easy to get one um but I did sure. get one a lot of people can't get one they can't access one so yeah you know, I guess that's maybe that's why I put off the calm vibe when I'm in these spaces because I'm like okay well I have that little asset so what is my part to pay it forward I guess that's that's actually beautiful. Wow. Thank you. Go you. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> oh, no, I, mean, just, I, I think of all the people... I mean, you think of the people in pain, though, right? They're not going... They want to yell at somebody, and you're thinking, okay, well, let's, you know, let's take it down. Don't worry. You know, yeah. everything's cool. I mean, I, mean, I find I, that beautiful. Yeah. That's, that's how I operate. I, I want to yell at people sometimes, but... um. <laughs> But I daily, I, I'm oh, sure, uh, you know, I live in an area that's very not, it's not necessarily 
where I'd want to be. I like being here because of the environment and my family, but you know, um, as far as ideologies mm-hmm. go, I am not with my peers in person. So yeah, I want to yell sometimes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I speak, yeah. I speak up when yeah. I need to. <laughs> good. That's good. As long as you speak up is, is when you need to. Yes. So it's interesting how you're, you, you know, you're trying to, to, I don't want to say trying to, but you, but you, you, you want to give off a, a, a calming vibe so that, you know, it helps other people through things. I'm trying to make a segue into this question that would be, and it wasn't bad actually, because the question is just, you know, if you look at those, those stories, the healers in those stories, are there aspects that you would want to change? I mean, we do this with every fiction writer, right? You're reading something and you go, I wouldn't have done that. Mm. No, I wouldn't have the character do that, you know. Those specific books, probably not. I think they feel so real. I don't um, Mm. have as much a problem. And I... I think in other books, though, you know, I I, I get that. It's like a... My goal a lot of the time when I'm reading, and this might seem like a roundabout answer, I guess, but um, I want to find a book that I don't critique and that I don't think, oh, well, they should have done that or should have written it this way. Exactly. Um, Yeah. Yeah, because I'm very prone to the editing, you know. Um, (laughs) Right. I think, you know, an interesting thought... I like that question because it just brought an interesting thought. Because right now I'm reading the book Kai K, um, and I would have to check the name of the author. Um, yeah, and this book is incredible. It's blowing my mind how good it is. And um, the healers in that are very strict to their religion. Um, and mm-hmm. I think the healer role is really tied to religion in a lot of books, and a lot even fantasy books, the Planet yes. of the Cave Bear books. So I think if I did want to change something, it would be fulfilling that healer role without being so beholden to certain values when they get in the way of actually taking care of the patient. Yeah. (laughs) I see. So you're talking about religion. Well, religion is ideology. You said ideology earlier. You're talking about because it's healing that's that's tied to an ideology Mm -hmm. in some cases i think so yeah i could go on a rant about the american medical system (laughs) (laughs) oh no this i i hear you gosh yeah i know i was having a conversation see now i'm about to do it no i'm gonna stop Mm. (laughs) i held myself back yeah (laughs) but because because there's you know, I mean, there's, there's, uh, well, maybe I'm wrong. Cause I was going to say, if you look at like Wicca, um, other, other pagan religions, you know, they won't, cause I'm pagan by the way, just, just yes. to throw that out there, you know, there's a lot about, well, let's heal the planet in some way. And I was going to say, that's pretty neutral, right? But I guess it isn't. There's still an ideology involved there. The, you know, the implication that humans are not, you know, the primary being or whatever, however you want to put it, you know. Yeah. It it still affects some of my decisions. It's interesting. I hadn't considered that. Yeah, I... uh, Now I'm going to have to think. There's a lot to think about, always. (laughs) Yeah, I don't... um, I'm also, like, I'd say I'm also pagan because I don't adhere to a certain thing. And I always, you know, when I started calling myself a witch, because I do tend to call myself that, it was always the question is, are you Wicca? I'm like, I'm not. Sure. I am right. Not. Right. Um, because Wicca has some strict ideologies in it. Oh, very much. If you get really very down. Much. Yeah. And um, I just don't want, I guess, I don't know. I like to form my own ideologies, which, you know, you could argue that's a good or bad thing. Um, but I think values are more important than ideologies. I agree. Something else to chew on. I will. For a I will. <laughs> Not at all. Because yeah. I, I will offend every single, every single Wiccan out there listening to this, like both <laughs> of them. And um, 
because like Gardnerian Wicca, ton of ton of just things that's like, look, here's the way life is. Bit of bit of interesting bits in Gardnerian, but then you can still look at Dianic Wicca and go, mm, bit of odd stuff in that too. <laughs> uh, Alexandrian Wicca, you go. Not to make a sales pitch, but Druidry, it's all yeah. about defining your own ideology, so. Yeah, and... Not to I, make a, a sales of, pitch. <laughs> a lot of people, too, I think, and this is true for me in a lot of senses, I think Wicca has a pretty strong sex binary, or gender binary, whichever term people oh, like very to much. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> And that gets yes. a little bit grating. It, it grated on me, you know? Um, yeah. So, yeah. You know, you can't make everyone happy. You can't please everyone. So I respect no. whatever magic people want to practice, but we got to know what works for us. It's really important. It's a great point. Yeah. But, but <laughs> yeah, when, when, when I first... When I first decided, gee, you know, maybe there is something out there than being an atheist. And this was, oh gosh, a decade ago now. Crazy. Yeah. Um, I looked at Wicca and I was like, hmm, it's kind of binary. And it's weird because it was a decade ago, long before I was, you know, willing to admit that maybe I was anything more than a binary. Mm. And uh, even then I was just like, oh, it's kind of... What was the word you used? Grading? Is that was it the? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like a cheese cutter, just little bit by bit. It's like no. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. No. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, it's and good. suddenly you're like, hey, I'm missing half a finger. What happened? It's all it's all in my Gardnerian mac and cheese. Yeah. God but... damn it! You know, <laughs> or, or sorry, goddess. I guess I don't mean to, oh, didn't mean to yeah. mess that up. God or and, and or goddess. You know, damn it. I. Uh, I think some people Look, say I'm that. Focus on the mac and cheese. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, all right, I got I got one last question because we went so far afield, but this has been grand. I, I appreciate going far afield. Me too. Do Do you even remember like the stories we were talking about? Because I barely do like the fiction, but um, Vaguely. you do. I know. Is it? I still do. It's only been thirty minutes, but so. Every story, as much as I hate it sometimes, every story ends up having an ending. Mm. What, what would be, what's the right ending? What's the right ending for Ari? I just love me a bittersweet ending. Um, mm. I think a story fails to be satisfying if there's not some kind of loss at the end and um, yeah somehow I think that's essential at least for me for a satisfying story and in, in whatever I'm reading um, but I I like some sweetness too I, I need a little bit of happiness relief um, I don't like despondent empty endings um, a lot of that <laughs> comes from my experiences with the barrier gaze trope. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Um, I'm not sure. The barrier gaze trope is just, just very yeah. frustrating. There's a few different definitions of it, but prior to the wonderful bloom we've had in the last, I don't know, 10 years of queer stories, prior to that, when I was very early, like starting to come out um, and start seeking stories that were not just straight cis het romance. Sure. You find one and it's a beautiful story and you get to the end and one of the couple dies. It's like there's a pattern of, of they say the consummation of the, the gay love and then one dies. And the consummation doesn't have to be that. It can mean anything. Yeah, just physical. Mission. Sure. Gotcha. Um, so that has wounded me <laughs> and I, I just hate that. Um, so I need a little sweetness there at the end. And I, I like 
to to be lifted up as much as I'm made sad. That that's the right ending for me. Yeah. I think sure. it it and better reflects life that way. Oh, for sure. But yeah. the barrier, you mean, like you know, some somehow the 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 I mean, the love can remain unrequited, but the you know, it can't just be like oh, one person died or that person moved to you know. Germany. I don't know. I'm throwing out. Yeah. A, sorry, Germany. I didn't mean to. <laughs> Is Germany okay with like gay people? I don't actually know. I think I have no idea. I think reasonably. I'll ask my German friend. I have a, okay. a buddy to talk to a lot there. Um, I know she's queer and she does all right. So, um, yeah. Okay. Um, Perfect. It's then. Very, so yeah. the person moves to Germany. Yeah. <laughs> to get away from whatever else, you know, moves from Florida to Germany. Yeah. I'm not going to apologize to you, Florida, just mm. to make that clear. Um, anyway, so that's the barrier. They're, they're separated in some way. I get that. Okay. And so yeah. the ending is they're just kind of looking at the barrier going, oh, well, shit. Yeah. And the barrier is usually death, you know, especially is... for the barrier gaze trope yeah. specifically. And I wish I had some specific examples. I, um, but it's been so long since I've read anything that ends that way because I mm -hmm. actually have a reading buddy and we screen for each other. We, we screen. <laughs> Good thinking. Sure that the endings are okay. Like you just, you know, um, I don't do that with every book I read, but for the most part, yes. It makes sense. It makes yes. sense. Yeah. All right. That's good. So th the sweetness though, is it, is that, does that need to be love happens or no. to win the war? Uh, no, it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, the, the fulfillment of a romance. I think it just completely depends on the book itself and what it's about. Um, I'm trying to think of another example. I haven't read a lot in the last year or two, actually. I got kind of mm -hmm. stopped up on reading for a while. Um, but, yeah. but yeah, it doesn't have to be romance. It's just like, I think I do, I do like good winning out, you know, I think I do. Um, sure. It's very classic, you know, uh, sometimes, sometimes it is cool though, to see the bad guy win or the bad, whatever, you know, the bad people, the evil side. Yeah. And I think that there sometimes can still that's fun. Yeah, I think there can still be sweetness even if the bad guys win sometimes. Um, I really like gray villains, oh, sure. as they say. So, and it doesn't yes, have to be a yes. lot either. It's just a little, it has to be some glimmer of hope, you know? Okay. We need that these days. Oh, gosh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, I've been, I've meant to tell you this for, I don't know, I mean, months and months, because you, you were saying, um, you know, we had, we had a conversation once about, about fiction and I threw out a couple of my favorite books and you're like, well, that's a shame. And I was like, oh, bogus. I was like, really? Did I thought I? they were good, but, oh yeah, sorry. I didn't mean to like, so I wasn't going to like, <laughs> you know, dump on you for it. It was, there was, I mentioned Marion Bradley Zimmer and you're like, oh God. Oh okay. yes. I, mean, I think that was actually what you said. And I went, well, yeah, her, but like the book is. I know. Well, I read. Of, mm. I read several of the, several of those books back in the day, and I loved them. But it's right. I mean, we, <laughs> right. we could do a whole another conversation about the separation, oh. of the creation from the creator. It's yes. very intriguing. Yes. Stuff. Right. <laughs> right. Very. What I was going to say though, because it had nothing to do with yeah. Marion Zimmer Bradley, but because what I was going to say was for for. Oh, gosh, I don't even know, because I would read fiction. I read fiction as, like, an undergraduate. I probably didn't read much as a graduate student, because I was mostly drunk or, you know, on some sort of speed or on speed and drunk. <laughs> and so I didn't read a lot. Let's move past my graduate school days. Once I got out of graduate school, I was, you know, I was reading a ton, but it was all, like, computer books, Stuff. And then I started reading philosophy and then psychology because I'm obviously a really fun, you know, person. <laughs> but at some point I knew a guy, I worked with a guy, 
And he said, oh, yeah, I'm reading this great historical fiction book. And I went, why are you reading fiction? Why don't you read something that's valuable? And he goes, wow, maybe you need to read some fiction. And I went, gosh, really? And, and then I started reading some fiction, and, like, my empathy changed. Because you you see other people's lives or other char- you know characters' lives and mm. you know it's like I I actually got a bigger I don't know how to explain this it's, I've never articulated it it's like I got a bigger view of the world by looking at a very small story in the world mm. so now I now I can't not read fiction and this was I don't know 2016 so it's been like six seven years that. Mm. Now I'm like, I got to read fiction. If I read two nonfiction books in a row, I go, okay, I got to yeah. cleanse my palate in some way. Yeah. So. I usually try to crazy. have a, yeah, I usually try to have a fiction and a nonfiction book going around the same times. Um, and, you know, there's yeah. science, there's science behind stories creating more empathy. Uh, it's really. Right. It's one of the reasons I write and I make stories and try to help oh, other people okay. make stories because it just, it gives you access to the human experience in a way you can't always get with other actual humans, which is super weird, but it's just right. the way it is. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, see, cause I mean, I did some research after that. I read some fiction story. I don't, or um, like a series. I can't remember what it was. Something by Bernard Cornwell, which can be a little corny at times, mm-hmm. but, I don't know if you have you read any Bernard Cornwell. I have not. Okay, I I'm a big fan of the Arthur myth. I mean, I brought up whatever the mists of Avalon. So you know, the yeah. first thing I read by Bernard Cornwell is his telling of the Arthur myth, which I don't even know what it was called. Yeah. I don't know. Forget it's something. But um, after I read that, God, why did I bring up Bernard Cornwell? No idea. Um, but I, I read that and I thought, wow, that was so amazing. Why? And I did a little research. And yes, there is a ton of study around people who, who read fiction, read a lot of fiction, being more empathetic, being able to, to, well, be more empathetic. I was about to say the same thing as empathetic. So yeah, just leave it at the word. Yeah, it's, it's so. very interesting. And, it you know, it's weird to think about, but then when you think about how old story is, it starts to make yes. a little more sense, you know? Um, that That's why I brought up Bernard Cornwell. Sorry, we, do you want to make your point first? No, no, that was it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because yeah. the reason I brought it up, it was a retelling of the Arthur myth that is at least 1,500 years old. Mm-hmm. Probably old. I mean, probably older, you know. Well, I don't know. He was supposed to have lived possibly in the, the third or fourth century. So goes yeah. back that far, I guess. Yeah. Um, third or fourth century of the Common Era, not uh, not BCE. But um, story w- was, the, was the way that people learned how to live. Mm. I mean, you know, if you grow up in a like a small village and all you ever, like the worst thing you see is you go, well, you know, it's, it's, it's Lummis. It's time to, you know, slaughter the sheep and, and, uh, you know, slaughter, slaughter the, the weaker sheep. You know, if that's like the worst you ever see yeah. story was a way of like saying, look, no, there's more to life, you know, and, yeah. and here it is, whether it's, you know, myth or, or whatever. I, I think we miss that today because most of our stories are hey what did kim kardashian wear to the emmys wow yeah. red cool yeah, yeah it's nice i think Own reading is just, sequence really? yeah it's such an important detachment from the mainstream and of of daily life and i yes i think we need that no matter what and i i recently really i would say kind of read discovered my just love for reading stories and listening to stories because I do audiobooks a lot too um and you know I've been I'll crave it I like I'll just be doing my dishes mm-hmm. or puttering around the house and I'm just like I need a story right now and I think people should give yes. in to that I think they should it's it's good for us science says <laughs> 
I agree. Oh, I agree. Oh, I, yeah. I mean, even if it's not science, you know it inside. Yeah. So, because you feel it, I feel it. I mean, it's been the way our humanity has gone for, you know, not millennia, you know, many, many millennia, 30,000, 50,000, 100,000 years at least. Yeah. can't remember when those those cave, <laughs> the ones in, in France, I'm trying to think of what it was, where it is, and... And even if I do remember it, I don't, I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> and so I always just go, what's that place in France? And then somebody will say it with a beautiful accent and I'll go, sure. Yeah, wherever. I know. It's slipping my mind now too. But I know exactly I, what you're talking I about. Say, <laughs> I, I want to say N-A-N-T-E with a little circumflex over it, S. I'm not going to pronounce it. Yeah. Do you speak French? No. <laughs> Okay. I don't. Then we can end. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm gonna have to find out after this because now it's you know, picked my brain. I want to know. <laughs> yeah, I want to say it was in um, what what used to be Gaul, so in in France now. Yeah. So so from from where you know where Gaelic languages came from, and so the the early Celtic uh, civilization. So. Mm-hmm. Anyway, that could go on forever and ever and ever. Um, So, (laughs) but I do, you know, I'm just going to say, I mean, I wanted to talk to you for a long time. You know, I'm really bad at asking people, hey, will you talk to me? Um, And I threw this out like last week, a couple weeks ago. I don't know. Whenever, whenever we talk last week. Yeah, last week. And I threw it out because I'm because I'm getting better at it. And uh I just thank you so much for for talking to me. I, you know, I've al- I've always thought very highly of you, and and uh, hopefully you know that. I really appreciate it. I think the same of you, and it's. Um, oh, thank you. I think you must be doing something right because you're doing it. You know. Um, <laughs> and I was very I'm nervous, you know, and you put me at ease, and I think that's probably the most important good. thing about talking to people. You know. That's good so. to know. That's good yeah. to know. Yeah, there's just no the viewers, viewers and listeners can't see this, but there's actually somebody off camera behind Ari with a club just in case she made the wrong answer. Yep, I'm watching me. You didn't have to be nervous. Yeah, no. but but tell, t- tell Ivan, tell Ivan to head out, can you? Okay. So I'm paying him by the hour. So, okay, there he goes. Okay, bye. Uh, bye, Ivan. Yeah, we don't need you anymore. So. Anyway, all I was going to say, thank you again. Um, yes. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, very, very much appreciated talking to you. Yes, you as well. Should I tell people where to find me? On yes, this, thank you. Do that. Out. I'll also, yeah, I'll throw it in, in show notes as well. Sorry, but yes, where, where do we find Ari Jensen? Yes, I'm social media averse, so I'm mostly just on sub, 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 sub stack, um, but I have a website, which is arieljensen.inc. It's hopefully easy to remember. Oh, cool. And on sub stack, I'm fighting for writing, and that's also the name of my blog. So those are the places to find me that are accessible to everyone, regardless of social media platforms, and um, maybe someday I'll make an Instagram. But that is to be decided. So yeah, that's where you can find me. And I love direct emails. Um, Hopefully people have gathered by this that I'm friendly, so they shouldn't be afraid to reach out. And (laughs) that's it. Yeah. (laughs) I think so. But I'll I'll link all this in the, in the show notes too, for sure. Because, because, you know, it's funny, you know, whenever, whenever I, uh, I hear a podcast or something and somebody goes, oh, yeah, it's really great. You can go see it on this website. The first thing I do, I'm not going to write it down. No. I'm like, is it in the show notes? I'm like, you bastard. Why didn't you put that in the notes? <laughs> so. The show notes are very important. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I make like chapters and stuff now, too. I didn't originally, but now, you know, it's like people listen to something and they go, you know, there was a funny joke. What was the funny joke about, you know, squirrels, right? But you make a chapter, funny joke about squirrels. People go, look, now I can go back to it. Yes. I mean, they don't, but go they back might. to it, that is. But <laughs> they might. Funny jokes about squirrels. I'm 
this will now be the chapter, funny jokes about squirrels, and people are going to go, what the hell is that? And go, there was no <laughs> funny jokes about squirrels. I want my money back. So. You'll have to come up with one for next time. All right. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right, so I'm going to let you go, because otherwise we're going to go for another hour and a half. So <laughs> thank you, Ari. Thank you again. Thank you. I'll talk to you soon, I'm sure. So in the time Ari and I recorded that podcast, I did send her a link about pens. We really can't talk about longhand writing for hours. Ari, thank you so much, sister. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Why Are You? If you'd like to hear more, again, please consider subscribing using the links you're going to find in the show notes. And until next time, I hope you remember that burning question from the beginning. Why are you? 